downtown San Francisco. It's the Cube covering RSA North America 2018. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at RSA's North American Conference 2018 in downtown San Francisco. 40,000 plus people talking about security. Security continues to be an important topic, an increasingly important topic, and a lot more complex with the having a public cloud, hybrid cloud, all these APIs and connected data sources. So it's really an interesting topic. It get, continues to get complex. There is no right answer, but there's a lot of little answers to help you get kind of closer to Nirvana, and we're excited to have uh, Misha Goffston. He's the co-founder and SVP of Alert Logic, CUBE alumni. It's been a couple years since we've seen That's you, right. Misha. I'm Great glad, to see I'm you glad again. To be back. Thank you. Yeah. So since we've seen you last, uh, nothing has happened more than the dominance of, of public cloud, That's and right. they continue to eat up. I think I predicted share. it on my past Did visits, you predict but it? Well, I, but, have to go check I think, the tape. but I think it happened. Yeah. <laughs> but it's certainly happening, it's right? Certainly happening, um, yeah. Amazon's uh, AWS's run rate uh, is 20 billion. That's right. Last reported. Google's their, their making moves. Their conference is bigger than RSA now. Is it? That's oh, 45,000. Yes, 45,000, yeah, to reinvent. It's, not, it's, That's right. it, it's crazy. And then obviously Microsoft's making big moves as is Google Cloud. So what do you see from the client's perspective as the dominance of public cloud continues to grow yet they still have stuff they have to keep inside. We have sure. GDPR regs are going to hit in about a month. What, well, one thing's for sure is it's not getting any easier, right? Because <laughs> right. I think cloud is turning things upside down and it's making things uh, disruptive, right? So there's a, there's a lot of people that are sitting there and looking at their security programs and asking themselves, does this stuff still work? When when more and more of my workloads are going to cloud environments, does security have to change? And the answer is obviously it does, but it always has to change because the adversaries are getting better as well, right? So right. Um, there's no shortage of things for people, people to worry about. You know, when I talk to security practitioners, the, the big thing I always hear is, if I'm having a good year if I don't get fired, you know? So, well, it almost feels That's like changed, it's inevitable, right? right? It's, right. it's almost like you're going to, it seems like you're going to get hit. In some way, shape, or form, you're going to get hit. So it's almost, you know, how fast can you catch it? Yeah. How do you react? That's how a huge do you change, change from places? five years ago, right? Five years ago, we were still kind of living in denial, thinking that we can stop this stuff. Right. Now it's all about detection and response and how does your incident response pro pro process work? That's the reason why, you know, last year, I think we saw a whole bunch of noise about, you know, machine learning and anomaly detection and, uh, AI everywhere and, a, and a, a whole lot of next generation antivirus products. This year, it seems like a lot of it is, a lot of the conversation is, right. what do I do with all this right. stuff, right? How do I make use of it? Well, and then how do you leverage the massive investment that the public cloud people are making? So, you know, love James Hamilton's Tuesday night uh, show and he talks about just the massive investment, say, Amazon is making in networking and security and, you know, he's got so many resources that he can bring to bear to the benefit of people on that cloud. So where, where does the line? How do I take advantage of that as a customer? And then where are the holes that I need to augment with other types of yeah. solutions? You know, here's the way I think about it and we had to go through this process uh, at Alert Logic internally as well, because we obviously are a fairly large IT organization, so we, we have 20 petabytes of data that we manage, right? right. So uh, at some point we had to sit down and say, are we going to keep managing things the way we have been, or are we going to overhaul the whole thing? So I think what I would do is I would watch where my infrastructure goes, right? If my infrastructure is still on-prem, keep investing in what you've been doing before, get it better, right? But if you're seeing more and more of your infrastructure move to the cloud, I think it's a good time to think about blowing it up and starting over again, right? Because when you rebuild it, you can build it right and you can build it using some of the native platform offerings that AWS and Azure and GCP offer. You can work with somebody like Alert Logic. There's others as well, right, to harness those, those abilities. Um, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say, I can build a more secure environment now in the cloud than I ever could on-prem, right? But that requires rethinking a bunch of stuff. Right. right. And then the other really important thing, as you said, the the, the top the, the conversation has changed. It's not necessarily about being 100%, you know, locked down. It's really incident response, and and really it's a business risk trade-off decision. Ultimately, it's an investment, and it's kind of like insurance. You can't invest infinite uh, resources right. in security, and you don't want to just stay at home and, and, and not go outside. You know, that's not going to get it done. So ultimately, it's trade-offs. It's making it's making very significant trade-off decisions as to where's the investment, how much investment, when does the investment then hit a plateau where the ROI is, is not there anymore. Right. So how do people think through that? Because at the end of the day, there's one person saying, God, we need more, 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 you know, anything is bad. At the other hand, you just can't use every nickel you have on security. So I'll give you two ends of the spectrum, right? And, and on one end are those companies that are uh, moving a lot of their infrastructure to the cloud and they're rethinking how they're going to do security. 
for them, the real answer becomes it's not just uh, the investment in technology and, and investing into get her, uh, better getting uh, information from my cloud providers, getting a better security layer in place. Some of it is architecture, right? And some of the basics, right? There's thousands of applications running in, in, in most enterprises. Each one of those applications in the cloud could be in its own uh, virtual private cloud, right? So if it gets broken into, only one domino falls down. You don't mm -hmm. have this scenario where the entire network uh, falls down because you can easily move laterally. If you're doing things right in the cloud, you're solving that problem architecturally, right? Now, aside from the cloud, the, I think the biggest uh, shift we're seeing now is towards uh, kind of focusing on, on the outcomes, right? You have your, your technology stack, but really it's all about people, analytics, data, what do you, how do you make sense of all this stuff? And, and, and this is classic, I think, with uh, the target breach and some of the classic breaches we've seen, all the technology in the world, right? They had all the tools they needed, the real uh, thing that broke down is analytics and people. Right, right and so, people. And, and, and we hear time and time again, where people, had, like you said, had the architecture in place, had the system in place, and somebody misconfigured a switch. Right. Or I, bit, I interviewed a gal who did a, a live social hack uh, at Black Hat, uh, just using some Instagram pictures mm -hmm. And, right. and, and and some information on your browser, no technology, just went in through the front door, said, you know, hey, I'm trying to get the company picnic site up, can you please test this URL? And <laughs> she's got a 100% hit rate. Oh, yeah. But I think it's really important, because as you said, you guys, you guys offer not only software solutions, but also services to help people actually be successful right. in implementing security. And, and, and the big question is, if somebody does that to you, can you really block it? And the answer a lot of times is, you can't. So the next battlefront is all about, can you identify that kind of breach happening, right? Can you identify abnormal activity that starts to happen? Uh, you know, going back to the, um, to the Equifax breach, right? One of the abnormal things uh, that happened that they should have seen and for some reason didn't, you know, 30 web shells were, were stood up, uh, which is a telltale sign of, maybe you don't know how you got broken into, but because there's a web shell, in your environment, you know somebody's controlling your servers remotely, that should be one of those indicators that, I don't know how it happened, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I missed it and I didn't see the initial attack, but there's definitely somebody on a network poking around. Uh, th there's still time, right? There's, you know, for most companies, it takes about 100 days on average to, uh, to steal the data, right? right so right. Um, it, I think the latest research is if you can find the breach in less than a day, you eliminate 96% of the impact. That's a that's a pretty big number, right? That means that if you the faster you respond, the better off you are. And most people, I think, when you ask them, and you ask them honestly, assess your ability to to quickly detect, respond, eradicate the threat. A lot of them will say it depends, but really the answer is not really. Right, because the other the 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 sad stat that's that's similar to that one is usually it takes many many days, months, That's right. weeks to even know that you've been breached. Right. Uh, so to, to figure out the pattern that you can even start you know, the, the, the investigation Some it's not and surprising, the fixing. Right? Uh, right. I don't think there's that many security operation centers out there, right? There's not, you know, not every company has a SOC, right? Not every, every company can, can afford a SOC. I think the latest number is for enterprises, right? For, this is Fortune 2000, right? 15% of them have a SOC. What are the other 85% doing, right? right? right. And, uh, and you know, are they buying a slice of a sock somewhere else? That's a, that's a service that we offer, but uh, I think suffice to say, there's not enough security people watching all this data to make sense of it, right? That's, that's the biggest battle, I think, going forward. And, and there, we, we can't make enough people doing that. It requires a lot of analytics. Right, right. which really then begs for, for the standalone single enterprise that re they really need help, right? That's they're right. not going to be able to hire the best of the best for their individual company, and they're not going to be able to leverage right. you know, best breed, which I think is kind of an interesting part of the whole open source ethos, knowing that the smartest brains aren't necessarily in your four walls, that you need to leverage people outside those That's four right. walls. So as it continues to morph, what do you see changing now? What are you looking forward to uh, here at RSA 2018? Well, so I made some big predictions five, year ago, five years ago, so I'll, I'll, I'll say you know, five years from now, I think we're going to see a lot more companies outsource major parts of their security, right? And, and that's just because you can't do it all in-house, right? There, there's got to be a lot more specialization. There's still people today buying AI products, right? And, and having machine learning models they invest into. There's no company I'm aware of unless they're, you know, maybe the top five financial firms out there that should have a you know, security-focused data scientist on staff, right? And if you have uh, somebody like that in, in your environment, you're probably not spending money the right way, right? right. So I think security is going to get outsourced in a pretty big way. We're going to we're going to focus on outcomes more and more. I think the, the question is not going to be what algorithm are you using to identify this breach. The question is going to be how good are you identifying breaches 
period, right? And, and some of the companies that offer those outcomes are gonna grow very rapidly, and some of the companies that offer just you know picks and shovels are gonna probably not do it nearly as well. Right? Right. So five years from now, I'll, I'll come back and we'll talk about it then. You know? Well, the other big thing that's gonna be happening in a big way five years from now is, is uh, is IoT and IoT and 5G. Right. So the the size of the attack surface, the opportunities uh, to to breach the, the data volume, the right. data volume, and the impact. You know, it's not necessarily stealing credit cards; it's taking control of somebody's vehicle, right. moving down the freeway. So you know, the implications are only going yeah. to get higher. We collect a lot of logs from our customers. Usually, the the log footprint grows at three times the rate of our revenue and customers. Right. So. You know, thank God. Like you the, know, log, the log, the log volume that grows you're at, tracking for a customer right. grows at three times three your times. revenue for that customer. That's right. Three, I mean, they're not growing at three times uh, right. that rate annually, right? But annually, you know, we've clocked anywhere between two to three hundred percent growth in data that we collect from them. IoT makes that absolutely explode, right? Right. Uh, right. You, you know, if every device out there, if you actually are watching it, and if you have any chance of uh, stopping the breaches on on uh, IoT networks, you got to collect a lot of that data. That's the fuel for a lot of the machine learning models because you can't put human eyes on on small RTUs and you know in, in factories. Uh, that means even more data. Right. right. Well, and 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 you know the model that we've seen in financial services and ad tech in terms of you know an increasing amount of the transactions are going to happen automatic automatically with no human intervention. Right. right. It's, it's hardwired stuff. So, so uh, I think it's that balance between data size and, right, and data right. volume analytics, but most important, what do you feed the humans that are sitting on top of it? Can you feed them just the right signal to know what's a breach and what's just noise? That's the hardest part. Right, right and can you get enough good ones? That's right. Uh, underneath your own, exactly. underneath your own shell, which is probably, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully. I All think right. building this from scratch for every company is madness, right? Yes, so madness. There's, uh, there's a handful of companies out there that can pull it off, but I, but I think ultimately everybody will realize, you know, the, you know I, I'm a big audio nerd, so uh, I, I looked it up, right? You used to build all of your own speakers, right? right so you would right. buy a cabinet and you would buy some some tools and you would build all this stuff. Now you go to the store and you buy an audio system, right? Right. right. Yeah. Well, at least the audio, you know, you had on the speakers are interesting because because there's a lot of uh, mechanical interpretations about how to take that yeah. signal and to make sound. But if you're making CDs, you know, you got to go. You got to go. You buy Sonos with the now, standard, right? Sonos right? is a fully yeah. integrated system, right? Exactly. What is Sonos? for security, right? It doesn't exist yet, and that's, I think that's where security as a service is going. Security as a service should be something you subscribe to that gives you an out set of outcomes for, uh, for your business, and I think that's the only way to consume this stuff. It's too complex for somebody to integrate from best of breed products and assemble it just the right way. I think the parallels are gonna be yeah. exactly the same. I'm not building my car either, right? Right, right. I'm gonna buy one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Misha, well thanks for the update, and uh, hopefully we'll see you before five years, maybe in a couple, and get an update we'll, on We'll, we'll uh, do some checkpoints at. along the way. All right. All right, he's Misha, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from RSA North America 2018 in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching.